Hi, welcome to Movie Theater. Today, I'm going to review a 1973 French anthology movie called Immoral Tales. So let's begin. The first story takes place on a beach, hence the title. Andre is a teenager who decides to take his 16-year-old cousin on a bike ride trip to the beach. When they arrive, Andre suggests they move to a more secluded area as it will provide them with some privacy and she can swim freely. His cousin agrees and the two find their way among the rocks to get there. Unfortunately, they get stranded by the tide. Andre orders his cousin to get out of the water and put on her clothes while they wait for the tide to recede. He is quite commanding but his naive cousin does not seem to mind. She puts on her dress, which Andre scolds her for getting it dirty despite being at the beach for a short time. He then instructs her to remove her undergarments as these are what she was swimming in. And so, reluctantly, she does so. As Andre mentions that they should play a game to pass time, he then inquires his cousin what she knows about the tide formation, going on to explain about the moon and the sun and how their alignment is necessary for a tide to break. Gazing at the naive girl, he finally reveals his true intentions, confessing that coming to this rocky part of the ocean had been his plan all along as he had had a crush on her for a while. He tells her that instead of water, he is thirsty and craves something else, her mouth wanting her to satisfy him and make him feel good. He claims that she is like a sheep and should lick the salt he is about to feed her. Wait what? Andre continues by telling her that she should concentrate on the task at hand, so her mouth and brain should focus on pleasing him. In return, she can also attain pleasure from him. As he speaks, Andre puts his finger into the girl's mouth. At first, she is hesitant, but as Andre continues his ministrations, she opens her mouth and starts suckling on his finger. Knowing he has manipulated her enough, Andre requests the girl to go down on him and accept his offering. Already aroused from the games the two had played earlier, she agrees. She attempts to fondle Andre, but he brushes her off saying there is no time to waste. He has a timer set to synchronize with his orgasm. He pushes her down and has her mouth service him, becoming animated as he talks about the tide. Eventually, the boy climaxes perfectly in time with the girl's own pleasure as seagulls cry in the background a reminder that they are not alone or does it serve as a lulling melody for their aftermath. The second story takes place in a church in 1980 and is called Therese Philosophy. It tells of a teenage girl living in the countryside who has devoted her life to serving Christ in the church. One night, as she was walking through the church, pondering on the sermon she had heard, the Lord's words echoed in her mind that he was her master of mind and soul. She spoke out loud that she desired to be happy and heard the Lord's response that he could make her happy if only she looked to him. However, her impure thoughts showed her that there were more ways in which the Lord could please her. She started fondling the church relics and believing in her mind that the Lord would reward her if she behaved right. How difficult it must have been for this poor girl to be aroused by such a place. Her emotions overwhelmed her and she began touching herself. Soon enough, an elderly woman, supposedly her caretaker, found her and chased after her. She called the girl a liar and a sinner before bringing back to her room and punishing the girl with a whipping before leaving her sobbing hysterically. The woman locks the poor girl in the room, informing her that she must remain in isolation for three days and three nights. As she breaks down crying, begging for religious materials to keep her company, the woman agrees. The girl continues weeping as she embraces her little old prayer book for dinner, being fed only raw cucumbers. One day, while alone in her quarters, she finds a book among her possessions and out of sheer boredom begins to read it only to discover that it is an erotic one. After a while, her spirit comes alive and she imagines being with her master again as she reads on, trying desperately to remain composed. Eventually, her thirst becomes too great and she succumbs to these overwhelming feelings. In the following scenes we see the girl touching the meager religious relics in her room. When that is not enough, she kisses the doll she has there in a desperate attempt to feel someone kissing her back. Her spirits are uplifted, and she soon finds herself lying in bed. She touches herself and remembers the cucumbers. Do you know what comes next? In the last scene of the episode, the girl gazes out of the window pondering her next action. Far away on the horizon, a man is observing her with a predatory glint in his eye, plotting how he will take her as his own. 
The third story is set in 1610s Hungary and is called Erzabet Badori or Zabit. The countess visits a small village and orders all pure-hearted and humble virgins to be presented before her. She inspects them one by one, paying particular attention to their feminine features. Before the countess' arrival, one woman had fled the village, as she was having an affair with another man at the stables. When they were caught, she ran into the woods but was eventually apprehended and brought before the countess alongside a young girl. The countess surveyed the women before her and gave her approval, after which they left the village to enter the palace. Amazed by the beauty and grandeur of the castle, the women felt that the countess could use some cheering up. Her loyal aide then showed them to a bathroom where they joyfully showered while making jokes and drawing lewd sketches on its walls. Once they were finished, their bodies glistened with fragrant oils and were adorned with heavenly-smelling perfumes. The countess angrily cleaned up the sketch in the bathroom as her aide prepared a beverage. Afterward, still in their nude state, they were escorted into a large hall where the countess offered them a goblet of wine. This caused them to become excited. Subsequently, when she agreed to let them touch her dress, they clamored around her until she fell onto a nearby bed. The countess is stripped naked and one girl bites the necklace she is wearing, collecting the pearls and inserting them into her vagina. Shortly after, the women become frenzied and start attacking each other, prompting the countess to quickly exit the room. Later, she walks into a bathroom where her aide is cleaning a sword in a bathtub filled with blood. She then bathes her body in it before rinsing it off with water. A woman is called in to help her dress afterwards, which leads to them caressing each other and eventually having sex. The next morning, the aide leaves while the countess remains asleep. Shortly after, guards from the palace enter her bedroom claiming that she has been arrested by court orders as there are claims that she murders young women and bathes in their blood to retain her youthfulness eternally. The final story takes place in a church during the 1400s when the Pope is present with his son and daughter. The Pope and his family share a close bond, though not in the way one would expect. After the church service is done, the Pope leads his children to the pulpit and shows them pictures of horses' genitalia, asking their opinion on it. He explains that sometimes one must give in to their primal urges, and it is better to do so with someone you love. At this point, his daughter's suitor has joined them. The next scene depicts the Pope, his daughter, son, and son-in-law engaging in ritualistic group sex. Coincidentally, a priest is doing Mass during sermon time. He starts explaining to the congregation what is right and wrong by giving examples of when certain actions considered harmless turn into greater sins. He also denounces the Pope's actions, separating himself from the man's sinful deeds. Suddenly, royal guards enter the church and take him away on orders of the king. He is accused of blasphemy and burned at the stake. In the last episode, we see the Pope carrying his grandchild outside for all to witness at its christening ceremony. His daughter is overwhelmed as she has no idea who fathered her child and here movie ends. Hit the like button if you have enjoyed watching this video and don't forget to subscribe our channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.